Raven, this beautiful weather we're having and enjoying it tonight. You're going to have lots of fun. I think so. You know, that's why you're coming. Yes. Uh, call this meeting to order, to order, Tammy. And the first thing, David, would you mind opening the bid for snow and ice removal? Let's hope there's figures this time. Okay. GBW with minimum 10 foot plow and spreader. Hourly rate 225. Estimated total 22,500. Two, single axle dump truck 22,000 to 38,000 GBW with 10 foot plow and spreader. Hourly rate 195. Estimated total 19,500. Four by four pickup truck with eight foot plow, uh, three quarter ton or larger. Hourly rate 125, estimated total 3,125. Four, four by four dump truck, 17,000 GBW minimum or better with minimum nine foot plow and spreader. Hourly rate 145, estimated total 14,500. Five, four by four dump truck, 11,500 GBW min minimum or better with minimum nine foot plow and spreader. Hourly rate 130. Estimated total 13,000. Final item. 4x4 four four backhoe or wheel loader, one cubic yard minimum. Hourly rate 155. Estimated total 3,875. Thank you, Dave. I don't think we need to do anything except turn that over to Tammy for. Um, Make sure compliance. Yeah, run it by Erica and get comments on it. Let us know. We're not going to make a motion. No, we normally do not. We don't have to. It's no, no, no much. That's one big John. Right. I'm kind of curious how we transported ourselves back two years right now. I'm not sure I understand the question, but let me. But we did not get a bid the last time we bid. So this time we advertised it again. We got one bid. Well, I, I understand that part, but if you read the bid documents. I have not read any of this yet. Okay, because the bid documents state that a public opening will be hailed on Tuesday, September the 5th, 2015 at the Township Building, 729 St. Matthews Road, Chester Springs, PA 19425, and the public notice in the newspaper read the same way. So the date, I mean the year was wrong. At least a year either that or we've got a time machine going somehow here. Okay, so since it was advertised incorrectly. Oh, oh, it's jokes. Okay, and we'll ask the attorney about that. Okay. We're not accepting it. We're just accepting the bid. We're not taking it at this point. But thank you for keeping our feet to the fire, Brian. <coughs> you get a kick at this. You want to handle that? Um, will you call Mr. McGrory in the morning and find out how we should handle that and let us know? I will. Thank you. But, um, John, so we only got the one. One bid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and the next item is the approval of minutes of the August 21st, 2017 meeting. Do I have a motion to that effect? I wasn't here, so. Um, okay. Yes, I will. I will. Move that the minutes from August 21st, 2017, as submitted, be approved. Second. Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. Oh, you got one. I thought. Yeah, can you? May, I know last 
At the last meeting, I read a statement regarding uh, local municipalities, anti-discrimination ordinances, and West Vincent's adopting one. Is there any way to reference the statement I made and not necessarily read it into the minutes, but make it available for people if you'd like to get that detail? On the website? Um, the minutes on the website or this it's the statement? I have no objection to that. Michael, do you? Yes. No, I don't know. Um, Tammy, can you make that happen? Sure. All right. I'll put it on the same note as the minutes. Just looking. Um, so it's not in here at all? It's referring to in Where? detail. Oh, you, yeah, it's referred to, but I would like to actually make the statement available to the general public. New business. Okay, here it is. I'm sorry? I just want to make sure that the general public can have access to that if they sort of do request. Mm -hmm. Well, they would anyway, but, yeah. but if we put it on the website that's fine. as public information, that's sure. fine. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the bills list. Tonight we're looking at township bills list in the amount of $51,244.67. The reimbursable bills list is $24,231.03. And the subdivision utility credit bills list is $25,670.07. All three combined total $101,100, or excuse me, starting at $101,145.77. I move the board approved bills list dated September 5th, 2017, in total amount of $101,145.77. Second. Any questions on the bills list tonight? Brian. I'm making your evening tonight, John. That's all right. Um, I got a question here. There's a uh, Cedarville engineering uh, entry that says zoning officer, zoning hearing, Dewey's. Um, the bill amount is for $2,012.54. How is this, or what's it for relating to the, to the you know, Dewey hearing? You know, what do they do? For that one, they testified. They testified where? Here. At the hearing. They testified at the hearing. Yes. Well, we hired. At least my understanding was that we hired a Cedarville Engineering Group for their knowledge and expertise and. They did their inspections, did their thing of writing up the um, notice of, of uh, violation. And we're paying them for, to, for them to defend their decision that we hired them to decide on? It could be described that way, yes. It sounds odd if it's their decision that we're paying for them to defend it. There's a whole court system out there that's, that's designed to solve and, and litigate and decide which side is more right. And you can't. You're, you're saying that nobody should be paid if they have to testify in court. Well, that's... No, I don't think he's saying that. I think he's saying that since they were contracted, they should be defending themselves and not building a township to defend their actions. Well, the question becomes... First off, Cedarville jumped into this midstream at best. So they're trying to interpret the code, our code, and what they saw and what they said. They were... They were... Well, I'm not sure... But were they put on as defense or, or um, they're put on as, as the townships when um, Ryan Willick was put on as the township's first witness. Right, but was he just defending his actions or was he defending prior actions? I think he was explaining uh, the basis on which he acted. I and he acted. and I also, it, it's a timeline, what he did on a certain date, when, so, so 
I, I would draw the analogy, um, although it's not perfect, that a police officer who makes an arrest and then testifies in court is paid overtime for that, that, that time. Yeah, but I think Brian's saying uh, that they're I, not it's employees, it's exactly. but they're not employees. If it was contracted services, a lot of times the contractor is taking on those responsibilities. That, that is, is my point directly is, is the con we contracted them to make, provide a service to us. And I kind of would have expected that since they made the decision, they would be shouldering the expense of their employees being there. Sir. They are working on behalf of the township when they make those judgments. They're putting their judgments on township letterhead. They're working for you guys. And so if you did not put in your contract with Cedarville Engineer that they would indemnify you for anything that came to a zoning hearing board or something, then it's a, it's a no-brainer. They are our, our civil engineers, whether they're working for Cedarville or working for the township directly, they're working for you guys. Chris, I was just going to say it all depends on what the contract says. Exactly what Sarah said. Brian, that uh, I agree with Chris on that. That what exactly does the contract say? And there's another issue that goes with that is, if I remember right, those notices of violations did not go out under uh, township letterhead, but they went out under Cedarville letterhead. I think so, right? Hey, Let's do this. Yeah, we, because we got a full agenda. Brian, as always, if questions are about. Let's pull that invoice, not pay it until we answer, get some answers um, to the contract language. Is that fair enough, David? Mike, it's fine. Brian? Fine by me. When you pull that contract, could you? Thank you. Any other questions on the bills list? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of? Hold on. Is that the total by 2201254? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Is that the new total? Yeah. What's the new total? Well, I didn't do it. I just said the total amount here. We're, we're taking that one in the off. Oh, well, we have to approve it. So that can be paid. You want to prove it and then no. check it, or you want no. to check it we'll and do it next time? We're going to pull it for the next uh, meeting then. Okay. That's what we're doing. So do the math. Did you do the math? Yeah, I'm doing okay. it right now. 9, 9 What's the number? I just don't want to do it wrong. Somebody will yell at me. Oh, it's coming out of your pocket. It is. 99, 133, 23. 99, 133, 23. Okay. That's the new number. Wait, yes. wait, wait. What was 99? Sarah, you've got to raise your hand, Sarah, and ask the okay. question. So it was 145. So Assuming that's the correct number, yes. We have a new, say that again? Assuming that's the correct number. It is, that's why I came up. Yes. 
So we have a, a motion with the corrected number, and we have a, per, uh, a motion and a second. So, and we've had questions. Any other questions from the audience? Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is correspondence. We got a, a thank you from a resident um, helping one of our police officers helping them find their horses that got loose from Dale and Allen. Next item is a letter of correspondence from. Um, uh, Department of Transportation regarding the Route 401 and Chester and South Chester Springs Road. Um, Mike, you want to give us a synopsis of this? Uh, basically, it's a letter from PennDOT saying that they are in agreement with concurrently removing the gated Eagle Farms and Chester Springs Road, along with the all-way stop at the intersection of Conestoga Road. So what this means is, I believe I was told today that they have started work on that. They do good measurements. So the importance of this to them is we made, a at least I made a promise to those residents on South Chester Springs Road before we took any action, we would have them highlighted at a meeting. So, um, is anybody for South Chester Springs? <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Tell your neighbors, not all, I'm just some of them. Next meeting, that's, it'll be a point of discussion some for of determination. Them. Some of them came for it tonight. Sarah, you're going to raise your hand. There's other people here. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Victoria Green, 509 St. Matthews Road. Can you either read the letter from PEDOT in full or make it available to us? We can put it on the uh, website. Mm -hmm. Tammy, right? Yes, sir. Okay, it's going to need a bigger website. Any other questions? Yes. Well, just, just to clarify, so do we know when the four-way stop sign might No, they happen? just agreed to do it. They didn't okay. give us a timeline or anything. Okay, and is there any redress as far as in next meeting if it's going to be highlighted? Is, do we have any, any say or not? One thing has a little bit to do with the other, but the primary thing is to fix or improve that intersection. PennDOT, along with two other townships and two fire companies and a police department, two police departments, want South Chester Springs Road open. But they also would like to see Route 401 improved. So this is what we decided, well, we would go after, I think it was last fall, we started going after PennDOT for improvements on 401 and South Chester Springs Road. We thought that, that was a good place to start. Thank you. And at first they they did not agree, and it took some arm twisting. And I believe Mike and David contacted our local representatives at the state to put pressure on them, and it apparently worked. Go figure. Anyway, Sarah, you had a comment. Okay, any other comment? Yes, Jim. John, I'm all mixed up on process because um, there's a, a agreements in place. So, are you simply saying that the board, by a, a vote, can just get rid of all prior agreements? As far as the roads, I believe that's, that's pretty much the case. But we don't have our solicitor with us. We will next week or in two weeks to make it. Well, it I'm trying, mean, to, I'm trying to understand process here because you're portraying as though it's up on the agenda. We're going to vote. That'll be done. I'm aware of an agreement that's in the development plan, and I think you are too. It goes well beyond roads, so that you're going to negate. So I'm trying to understand, we can you do that in a vote? I believe we can, but that's why we need our solicitor. That's why we pay our solicitor for But uh, I could be wrong. Yes? And I, I encourage you to <clears throat> take your time and have your solicitor talk to the attorney that represents the neighbors for Chester Springs Road to ensure that process is properly followed. Uh, because um, we're in disagreement with the process being followed and the hierarchy of <clears throat> legalities and what should and should not be honored. Um, so I'm quite concerned <clears throat> that 
legalities are funneled into the team. Has there been so contact? So I asked that um, your that Joe get in contact with David Brennan promptly. Has there been any contact between? They tried. We they, we try, and there often feels like there's um, purposeful delays. To be honest. Okay, so and they have not excuses talked to each other yet. There's been attempts. <laughs> But not successful. No. Okay. No. So we need to talk to Joe about that. Absolutely, and I ask that you be in contact with David Brennan. Okay. Before he goes away. Any other comments? And I second what Jim Hill says. That I... Sorry. I was just going to suggest that there might be other people here from South Chester Springs Road who might want to say something. They have today. hands, and I assume we're yeah. going to get some. Okay. Yes. Good. I, 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 and I think the point that I don't understand is clearly 401 is a state road that PennDOT would have purview over. I do not understand their role in determining what happens to South Chester Springs Road because it's not a state road. So while there is pressure from other townships around us, you all here were voted in by our township to support our needs. And I think it's important that we don't necessarily cave to other townships in having us fix the problems that they've created. As a supervisor, so, we're, we're supposed to look at things from all I, You know, and I appreciate that, but I also appreciate the fact that as our representatives, you need to understand the points of view and the documents that are currently in place and were put in place for a good reason. I think we've done that to date, and I'm not. We're, I don't think we're done doing that. I think that's that's the process we want to follow. Our ordinances may very well be different. I am only familiar with West Vincent ordinances. I'm not familiar with Upper Euclid or West Pikeland, but differences likely exist, and that is the fault of no one. And our township engaged and over 15 plus years of development that resulted in where we are today based on various ordinances and we can't just say well upper euclid you have your ordinances and your development plans um, and now we're here to take care of you i mean i'm quite shocked that anyone from twin hills and upper euclid would be caught surprised by um, the development given the toll brothers trailer sat there for 15 plus years and clearly at risk to be developed land. Um, so I, 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 mean, I don't understand what you're saying because the original plan had that, did not have that road shut off or cut it off. The intentions were there. Um, specifically in a development plan, was that specifically mentioned? No, but you have right. gates in other sections and you also have the conditional use approvals, which clearly laid out the foundation for this road to be maintained in its current state. If you read the conditional use approvals, which I have sat in many meetings reading to you, and I can email that to you promptly in the morning, that the road was to be maintained in its original condition in the way it is now. If you fast forward to 2013, and you have the official board approved closure of the road. You put all the documents together, and the substance <coughs> is clearly there. The intent on what was meant to be on Chester Springs Road. So you're saying the intent was to close the road? Absolutely. Oh. That would be my interpretation. Not, not, not only that, if I may jump, I'm sorry. No. Sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Yeah. Not only that, Mike, but the 2013 agreement swapped TDRs to them for exchange, in exchange for this. So this is... This is the board's doing. Um, well, I know it was the board's doing, but I didn't, uh, I didn't, the, my understanding was they did that because of a perceived danger at 401. That's what I, that was my understanding. In exchange for development rights. No, it's they closed the road no. because of a perceived danger at 401 at Chester Springs. Right? And the result of a traffic study, what was it, in 2001, Jim? Yes, Mike, but it got exacerbated as TDRs were expended and more units were built, Absolutely. more traffic created. Got which that increased it for C. Which increased it. In increased That's the why perception it's perception of danger. They're tied together. Uh, they're tied together in the 2013 amendment. Yes, they are. Jim and Jennifer, I, I, you know. So anyway, you guys can discover that with your turn. I, I won't cut you off. I'll 
hear it again. But that's what I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can have a complete discussion and put this to rest once and for all in two weeks. So if you would start here if you, or yeah, next meeting. Well, you think you better call David Bruno probably yeah, we'll, because we'll I'm get telling on. you, my patience has expired on legalities, and they absolutely have to be honored. Because if something isn't honored, I, I've had it. The, the one thing I expect of my township is that we follow the law and we follow agreements that have legal weight. Well, there's no argument from us that well, happened. Well, I, in my in my experience. <clears throat> Things aren't being followed and process is not being followed properly. And I think that I've inspired all my patients with that and I agree. Okay, with you. I would rather you take your time to make sure it gets done right than to find ourselves in deeper trouble. Wholeheartedly agree. Yes. Ryan Green, um, forgive me if I'm being slow, but um, the point then is to, and I know you're going to do this next meeting or whatever. The point is to maintain safety at the intersection of South Justice Springs and 401. So what does that do to those of us that live yeah, that's on, that's, on other that's, corners? Because you're opening it up to around a thousand people coming through from simply that development, not to mention all the other people coming through. I just purchased the property right there on that corner and, you know, was not aware of this. Two different things. 401, the improvements there, and down at uh, Eagles, um, Eagle Farms Road and 401. Byers. Byers Road, I'm sorry. <clears throat> that's what brought us, that's brought us, what brought us to this uh, PennDOT letter, and that's what started this conversation. I understand that. There's a, a, a very, I don't know what's a germane topic, is the South Chester Spring Road because it's dead center in the middle, middle and I can only describe it as a perceived um, problem with two townships. Upper Euclid, middle let me what? finish. Upper Euclid and, and West Pikeland Township. Their residents are feel like they're being trampled on their rights because we're closing that road. And it's, for instance, something happened last week. Tammy, Aqua America closed the road in West Pikeland Township. Didn't give us any notice. We started getting phone calls. And how do you get out? Now you've got to go all the way up the other way. And that was just another source of irritation for these folks. Anyway. So it's in the middle of what now? Say that again? You said it was in the middle of South Chester Springs in the middle of fires and what else? The gate. No, wait, can you... The gate is on South Chester Springs Road between Eagle Farms and St. Matthews Road. Okay, but DOT again only does state roads? Yes. Generally speaking. I, I couldn't understand. He said DOT only does state roads. That's right. <laughs> but that doesn't mean they don't have opinions. They didn't. Okay, when, we closed, thing, when we yeah. closed South Chester Springs Road, they wrote us a letter and they really objected to uh, doing it. And That's just fine. That they have an interest in. Okay, but their interest is not our interest, which you are supposed no. to be representing. Correct. Correct? Yes. Okay, so where are you guys on this? Say that again? Where are you on this then? If you're right supposed here. to be representing our interests here and they're just expressing opinions, where are you guys? Because apparently, and I know you got to speak to your counsel, you guys can just pass one vote and just... I need to have an attorney saying that. I'd love to hear from Jennifer and all the other residents, too. I can't make I'm just trying to get your, your feelings on the matter. I wasn't here for when it happened. I'm not in favor, and I pulled Ron Bross from there. I think it looks like a war zone, but that's not... I don't live there. So and the whole know. intersection actually is against the conditional use approval. The whole thing is wrong. It shouldn't look like a war zone. The, the gate looks like a war zone. And the one at Kennard also does. Um, it's just, I, but I that's here and you're there. That's an is opinion. That is that a you're, judgment? Yeah. Or is that, you're asking an opinion that isn't really pertinent to tonight's meeting. It is pertinent if this is, if you have the ability to unilaterally make a decision. I want to know if you're doing it based on an aesthetic judgment or a, a safety concern. It's a safety thing. To get okay, then what's, to what's get the four hundred one looks like a war zone. To get four hundred one and Chester Springs Road safer, the only way to do that is to open up Ch uh, South Chester Springs Road. Okay, okay so no, what about no, the, no, it isn't. You can, it is no, because no, PennDOT will not do it otherwise. Who what about St. Matthews and South Chester Springs Road, right? They Who don't about to have a child? It. Is that the child going to be able to? Wasn't that the premise of the whole thing that we had to make it safer? 
a thousand roads just in fire station phase one plus phase two that are connected to a thousand cars or a thousand residences times four to six trips a day. That's four to six thousand potential cars going each way. You also open it, you have residents past St. Matthews coming through to connect to the turnpike. So you have a massive amount of traffic. It's the traffic volume. Okay, yes, the intersection is not safe, so it can't handle any more volume on it. And your your right. my impression is you guys want to put in a four-way stop so you can open the road and relieve the pressure you're feeling from up there townships. No, no. So I thought, okay. the, I thought, well, the, I I thought the study that showed it. that there wouldn't be that much additional traffic that you're okay. saying. Okay, let's go back to the traffic study, which I and many of the other residents sat up for. 20, 30 minutes talking about. The current, the last traffic study was bogus. You know why? Number one, it did not account for any of the new, any, any of the new homes in fire station phase one and phase two, and I'll tell you why. The two weren't connected at that time in October, and all the homes hadn't been built out. So that traffic study didn't even consider any of the new homes. And that's just here. You have Pulte, you have all these new developments that are eventually using these corridors, as I call it, and then when, how do you determine people won't use our road from additional traffic short of stopping a car and interviewing those drivers? How in the world could you understand? Oh, you're I not know. doing It was a bogus conclusion. So those two points, in my mind, negate the traffic study completely. Okay, so you're questioning the study. Absolutely. Okay. And there was a study in 2001 that considered all of these roads, all of these areas together, combined townships, what I'm asking is... In relation to the what, entire development plan. What I'm asking is, if we have this debate tonight, we'll, we'll get out of here at noon or midnight, and we're going to have it again in two weeks, the exact same debate in here. What I'm asking is, I think we know where you folks stand. Right. But but we want to hear more, and we want to get our attorney in touch with who's ever yeah, How much more do you want to hear? Because we all met in May, May, and we had a collective meeting. How much more do you want to hear? I mean, it feels like Groundhog's Day. With all due respect, I'm really sorry to get this angry and this personal, but we're just, I mean, it's been, we've been at this for like two years, and it's the same conversation that we've never met, especially our attorneys. In two weeks, we'll have another meeting, and we'll, we'll, we'll put you out of your misery. Well, I'm having David connect with Joe, and I Good. sure hope that they connect. They have a live conversation because well, we've had many attempts. We'll also have Tammy call our attorney to make sure that happens. Because that's going to be important before we have the next meeting. I caution you that it's better to go slowly and make sure you're following legalities. A week, because just, I'm Jennifer, trying. just Jennifer, Wait, I know you're upset, and I'm not trying to irritate you more. A, a week or so ago, our attorney told me he has not heard from your attorney. There's two sides. And until we get them both well, in the room, it doesn't matter. We're in huge disagreement with any interpretations you've had from a legal side, so, so that you better. In everybody two weeks, better we'll give you time. all the time in the world. Jim. Yeah, careful I process because I wouldn't expect in two weeks. You're just thinking in two weeks you'll have what you want. What if no, 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 no. What if residents aren't ready in two weeks for this conversation? If you're not ready, or we're not. Residents. If We're you're not, not represented. No, by no, that, that's fine. Let us know. This is for you folks. I'm not trying to ram anything down. Yeah, so if you don't want it in two weeks, let us know if you want us to move it. That's okay. fine. Have you read the conditional use approval? No. Sorry. That that's actually allowed the approval for the entire development. That's a really important document. document. I kind of two. Two part question. I'll get Jennifer that mentioned camp, that there were a number of gates. I'm aware of the one that we're talking about in the one off of Veronica Drive. Are there more? Say that again? Jennifer mentioned that there were more gates. I'm aware of the one on Veronica. Are there more besides There's another the, those gate on two? Canard, up the road. Yeah, that's Canard's the, the one discussion. that comes into Veronica. That's the same gate. It's Canard on one side and Veronica in the, sub, the South Down subdivision. And those two gates were placed unrelated. So I just wondered if there was a third or a fourth. That's what I was Nothing hoping. I'm aware. Okay, good. The other thing is, since PennDOT has started measurements and stuff, do you think they're going to move forward, or are they just going to wait to hear from you now? Or 
Are they, they're going to keep on marching. I heard that they were spotted measuring, but they don't notify us. So. Right. So you could be having these meetings in the meantime. They're putting the stop signs in. We right? want to improve South Chester or South Chester Springs Road to 401 I'm, anyway. I'm in favor of that. Chris, you had a question? Uh, yes. Can you outline um, a process that the township would be okay with in addition to verbal comments at the next meeting? Uh, I know there are many of us that would like to submit written um, letters or other documentation regarding some of the things we've been discussing. Is the township open to accepting those types of submittals, even if you are not represented by council, which I think many people are not? Did you understand that? Yeah, your yeah, question was whether uh, at the next meeting writings can be uh, received from right. residents. And yeah, the, the obvious answer is sure, because that's your right to petition as a citizen. Yes. And you don't have to live on South Chester Springs Road to have an opinion on it. You might travel there, or you might just know those folks and feel for them. It doesn't matter. You're allowed as a resident to have a comment on it. In order to provide the township with enough time to consider written submittals, would you want that before the meeting? Or if it's submitted afterwards, will you still take it under? Anything ahead of time is always gives us more time to review it. But are you going to be making the decision at the next meeting? No, we. It appears now that I doubt if we will be able to make a motion or, a, a, but it could be at the next meeting. What I was trying to do was alert those residents that the next meeting. Let's let's be serious and go through the entire process. As I promised at the last meeting, yes, Brian. So don't think you know we're talking about. I'm going to say, you're saying discussion. I'm going to use the phrase "dog and pony show" because we have concerns from from Jennifer of what the original township uh, agreements were inside of the township. We seem to have a position from PennDOT of what they think it should be done. And then we also have some opinions from the local residents who, in my opinion, you know, get the information to you before the next uh, meeting so that at the next meeting we can say these, these, these are the issues and here is either how we're going to resolve them or this is how they could play out or this is where we could end up with litigation or something like that. So that we've got kind of a full list of, of the differing positions of the differing you know, groups of people, et cetera. Thank you, Brian. Any other comments, Jim? One last uh, comment. Um, in the uh, traffic report, uh, one caution was in there, if I recall, about stack up accidents on, at this stop sign, uh, about the high probability, possibility of stack up accidents on Route 401. I would ask you also to ask your attorney to assess that risk because you're, you'd be backing that up, I, would be my assumption. If that's okay, you take that risk uh, along with PennDOT. So uh, I don't know if that was assessed legally as risk and liability, but it was in the report that stack ups could happen due to high volume and low visibility. So I just put that From out there. From a legal there. standpoint or legal consequences when we met with PennDOT, it was just not, that legal part was not discussed. But the, the unintended consequences could ha occur and have more rear end you know, yeah. there. Um, and they're aware of that. They don't think it'll happen. And <laughs> OK, it will. I just put <coughs> that on your radar screen, too. Thank you, Brian. Brian. Might it be possible to have somebody from PennDOT here that could explain their reasoning and logic? Because we're hearing a, a lot of, of things, and we've got a letter, but the letter really doesn't tell you how they reach those decisions. Maybe having somebody from PennDOT here who could explain that and answer the question directly, as opposed to you being a pivot people, might be a good thing. And a traffic consultant, too, possibly. What do you think? Sure. You're going to have to pay for them, right? Or Brian will. Yeah. We'll try to have two, our, our traffic consultant that's familiar with the project and also uh, PennDOT. Can't say we'll get PennDOT. I know we'll get um, 
traffic consultant. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Just to put a finer point on it, um, the township will share the liability should an accident happen at the new 401 stop. I don't think so. It's a state road. I can't answer that. Just letting you know. And these two have to be separate. You can approve the uh, an intersection for safety and leave the road closed as was intended with development we plans. Can. They can be separate. They can. Pen, pen dots will not do it unless you don't the road have is. to. You don't have so to. So with it, the less volume, there is not as the risk that we're talking about. The risk is when you open the road to all the additional homes around us. Virtually the King of Prussia that was built next to us. Okay? So it's it's the amount of traffic that's on, on 401 last year and this year that these improvements are not perceive what's going to happen in the future. Opening our right, so they can opening our road will create the issue on our road, not just at the intersection, but the entire from the intersection all the way through. I think Mike's point was, and I can't speak for him, was to get penned up to the table to to agree to this. Yeah, so you want penned up to pay for it. I get it. You want them to. Well, pay we for can't. It. We can't do it. It's not we our can't road. do it. That's fine, but you. you but you they, don't have to do anything. But they can't force you to open the road. Right. Uh, our road. You're no, they can't. We no, should no. keep a road that we do not own. We should keep it as dangerous as possible to keep other traffic off it. No, That's you're basically saying, what you're saying. You know, That's you're saying that you're going to make it more dangerous and put in an inadequate ability to slow down traffic given the sight lines. Um, oh, I mean, that's PennDOT. I think they know, or no, hopefully they would know how to no. control that. I mean, just on 401 up near Great Valley, that hill, they have a light telling you that the light's uh, red. That actually has a longer sight. I promise you we'll have a full well. airing of all these comments. You're going to hear all these in two weeks. That's Chris. It, it seems to me here that if you look at it, like an analogy would be a poker game. We hold all the cards. What's Vincent is going to win? I mean... This is just my opinion. These residents want to keep this road closed. Okay, that's what they were promised. They want the township to hold up its end of the deal. It seems to me you take that off of the table. Let PennDOT engineer a different solution to their problem. It's a state road. Let them figure it out. That's my opinion. <coughs> There's different ways to skin a cat. You had a question? Yes. I did. I just wanted some clarification on what Mike said. I think he was starting to say PennDOT wouldn't put in the traffic signals unless the gate was going to be open. Correct. They've already started that process. So has the township already given an indication that you're going to open the gate as well? No. So then why would they start? I can't tell you why they started. I can tell you that. It sounds confusing, I'll tell you. It sounds I agree. conflicting and confusing. Yes, but you have to ask. You it's have hard. to ask. Penny. But there's there's another point to this. We keep just homing in on South Chester Springs Road and 401. Another piece of that pie is Eagle Farms Road and South Chester, or, and um, 401. Byers. Byers Road and 401. But that. All, but, but the, both those intersections. Right. And down there is even a bigger problem, and we're looking to put in um, possibly a, a traffic light with a left-hand turn lane. Both those intersections are dangerous, and the, the one down in, in West Pikeland is even more dangerous than the one up here. And it's not, it, neither one of them was on PennDOT's 12-year plan. We're trying to push them to make that road safer. And they agreed to it in some weird sense. There's another element you're missing by not being familiar with development plans. Um, the trail system that's being put in place. There's an existing trail system, but along with Veronica and Lennar, there are trail systems that are around the developments and connect the developments. And you open this road to become a road other than what it is today and what it has been. Those trails are negated. And in Lennar's plans, they're equestrian trails, which I will be using. I am using. So when you put the equestrians and the riders on those roads, and we have now a thoroughfare, you're putting 
now equestrians and the hikers in danger. And you're negating the use of those trails. So those equestrian trails that were put in there were for the point of balancing development with countryside, development with safety. And you're trying to unwind that. I'm just, I, I wish you were familiar with all the details and nuances. And I sure hope that Joe is. Sometimes I'm not so sure. Everybody sort of plays the card, what well, was I wasn't here for that history. Well, that doesn't negate those documents, those agreements. And I still plan to uphold those, the way I purchased my property, based on my research coming to this township, knowing what was in play and what was coming. So I plan on executing that. Noted. Any other comments? See you in two weeks on that. Brian, can you, work next item is the Toll Settlement Avenue Extension Request. Can you explain that to us? No? I don't, know. I don't know what the letter says. It's an extension of their land development they have for Sunderland Avenue. They have a land development plan to extend Sunderland Avenue. They need an extension of time. They need us to approve it? Yes. Just time. It's a timeline. They need more time. I make the motion to grant the extension for Sunderland Avenue plan for Eagle Farms until December 11, 2017. Second. Any comments from the audience? So when is that going to happen? When, when yeah. they want to extend? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, just wait. Uh, what time are they extending that to? December 11th. December 11th. December 11th. December 11th. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And that will be the final plan? Is that what will be submitted for approval? I'm not a solicitor and I'm not a land defender, but one thing I have learned, never say final. I think it's, <laughs> I think oh, it's final. An amended final plan application. That's so that's what it will be. Based on. Hopefully, that's that's what we're looking for. But I don't know how it goes. They can always buy one. I'm sure there's another room for an extension in there. The U.S. Uh, new plan for Brian to review. Yes. Um, hasn't seen it yet. Hi, um, my name is Linda Davies, and I live in Creekside Fire Station. My concern is um, Toll Brothers is hoping to wrap up the 40 carriage homes by the end of this year, and um, hopefully dedicate the streets. Um, I happen to live where the big mountain is from Sunderland, which we connect to Eagle Farm. And I, when I bought the house, I was told that the road, the extension would be going into Eagle Farm. So my concern is if Toll Brothers decides to leave, um, where are we if they pull out of the neighborhood? And, this, and they haven't started construction or something of this extension to Eagle Farm from Sunderland. Do you want me to say yes. yes. By the way, this is Brian Kulikowski, he's the township um, engineer. Working on our behalf. Hmm? Working on our behalf. So the extension request is per the municipal, municipalities planning code, the MPC, that Toll Brothers is required to either request an extension of the township's review or the township was obligated to vote to deny it tonight. Toll Brothers was is required to put the Sun of Avenue extension by court order. They cannot not put that extension in there under court order to put that in. There is a plan in my office right now. A review will be coming out in the next two weeks. A review of their, they address the comments raised in my initial letter and at the previous planning commission, which was June. June or July. July. Your July planning commission or June, whichever one was, I forget at this point. When you issued the, a bunch of conditions that you wanted to see done, which is the extension of the culvert, they have addressed several of those. There's still some comments in my letter that are they're minor stuff that are outstanding and I have to go through it and make sure. But they did widen the culvert, they did widen the right away, they did everything that you, you asked them for the specific comments and they came back and resubmitted. And currently it's going through the review process in my office and I anticipate having that next letter out in the next two weeks. Brian, yes. Mr. Costanzo from Creekside as well. One Hello. Of neighbors, hi. We've exchanged some emails. Yes. Um, what is it specifically they're requesting an extension for? If you have the plan, by what do law, they need? By law, when they submit a plan, there's 90 days to review and approve a plan. 
for you to read? No, the township. The township, whatever. Yes, the whole process. Okay. The township is given 90 days by state law. All right. If that plan is not approved within 90 days, it's either deemed approved by this by law, or the township has to vote to not approve it. Okay. If the applicant requests an extension of that time frame, the township has two options. Grant it, I mean, accept their extension request, or deny the plan. Why would they want an extension request? You have 90 days. They're saying they're 90 they days, want- Their 90 days is up. If they, we don't grant the extension until December, they do not have approval, so the plan will then be considered to be approved as submitted with no corrections. This, this, is, this, yes, this is just normal part of the process of working with the developer. We almost always have an extension, especially from a big developer, when we send plan back for some re-engineering. It takes them more time to get their side done than we still need time to review it. So neither one of us want to do the deemed approval or disapproval so we get an extension so that we all have time to get our jobs done right. So the town inspecting, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I understand um, reading some documents that they have tried to get out of this three times now and they've been appealing and they've been denied uh, through the courts. They didn't want to have to put this this road in from Sunderland to Eagle Farms. So that I'm may just trying be, to think, do you have any guarantee that if it does get approved and you guys say it's going to go ahead and they disappear uh, January 1st of 2018, that this will get done? That's my biggest concern. What leverage, they're what leverage do they're we under have? They're court order, and I'm sure there's some escrow money someplace. The escrow was not, will be established with the web development agreement. That they, when this gets to, to the approval stage, there is an agreement signed between Toll Brothers and the Township, and there's money posted by Toll Brothers with the Township to okay. ensure that it's constructed. And and we don't know how to protect ourselves, so that's that's why we're here tonight. Yes. I mean, there's a big pile of dirt. You know, you know what I'm talking about, the yes. culvert. It looks like a goat could live on it. And I just <laughs> wonder if they don't put it in, who's going to take down these mountains of dirt? If they do put it in, who's going to protect us once they depart? They are still the under their construction permits from the state, which is their MPPS permits. I do confirm that today with both the state and with Toll Brothers. So there's still there's still earthwork to be done out there that they cannot be released from, from their current permit obligations. They are not in position yet either to apply the township for dedication. And they, if they do that, there's a process that they go through. The dedication process for phase two way, which is just that piece of road between phase one and phase two, took almost a year to get through with okay. back and forth. Okay. So it's not something that happens overnight. Okay. So, Brian. Yes. So that leads to the second problem that we have. A big problem. Right. So the longer the dedication takes, the longer our families do not have school bus service. So we have, we are going to have upwards of 25 children in a couple of weeks. We now have about 18 children whose parents have to drive them all the way down Sunderland to a busy intersection, Sunderland and Station, where all of the morning traffic goes through for the um, rush hour. And their kids and their parked cars are forced to take their bus from that corner because we don't have a road that's safe enough for the buses and the schools to come into the development and get to kids. Um, so we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But, you know, there's no real rush for the road except that we can't get our road dedicated so that the O and J Roberts buses can come through. We can't get the neighborhood from um, the Upper Euclid Township at the courts to allow us to have the O and J Roberts buses turn around into their roads. Um, so we need pressure put on toll to get those roads, whether or not they have a permit to, to leave, in shape for school buses, and then we need the township to help us um, encourage O&J Roberts and the bus company to use those roads in an undedicated fashion. It is an O&J Roberts school district issue, school buses. We have no control over, over that except, like you said, dedication of roads. Right, so they were, they are telling us that for the, un, if they're not dedicated, the only way they'll drive on them is if they're safe. They'll make an exception. They but will they make an exception. I've heard they've made exceptions in the past. 
So is there any pressure that the township can help us with to make toll get those roads in shape? The last time that was a problem in the township was before my time. Uh, Chief, Chief Sluninger yeah. can uh, campaign for some residents and uh, they were able to get... Could I ask you to give our chief police a call? Oh, absolutely. Um, Who's this? And uh, he's very agreeable to Senior. that sort of thing. Okay, great. Thanks, Tammy. I'll talk to Tammy. Um, we had this problem on Janie Lane uh, last year, or we could be even two years ago, because the school buses would not use Janie Lane because of the condition. And what, what, what the bus company did was they actually had the, one of their small buses use Janie Lane to get the children back and forth. So that's, you know, that was, that's how they resolved the Janie Lane issue. I mean, Janie Lane's a pretty, pretty rough road. It's up to the school district to supply that pressure. Brian. Sean, I, it, it, you kind of alluded to it uh, earlier. This came, has came up before to the township with roads which were not dedicated and whether the school buses could or could not use them. And I think, you know, I would look back in the history and see what they did then and you know, see whether we could, could replicate it again. Because that would solve your problem. Because they, the, the people at that time made the same statements that you, you made. And, and I understand that completely. We've I've already, quite, we chit chat we're, amongst them. We're going to look at and see what we did and everything in Eagle Farms. So I know what road is, I just can't think of it right now. That's okay. You know, the, the thing is, if the road's in good shape, I think we can compel folks to use it. Build it first. Um, no, not, not the. Oh, not no, 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 not the Sunderland extension. What we need is for the Great. bus to come down Sunderland into our circle in Creekside and exit back out Sunderland. We don't need the Eagle Farms Road to be done if the Rainer Butternut Circle is in good enough shape for the school bus to drive on it and it's safe. Our chief is much more familiar with the roads than I am, but what I would suggest is you ask to meet him there so you can actually get a much better feel of, of what you're dealing with. Okay, and the police chief's is role Mike's in manager. this is what? He encourages the uh, school buses. He does? Yes. We've had this problem with uh, hmm? part of the Eagle Farm development. Okay. And what we did was, I'm trying to be responsive here, is anybody listening? What we did was to get the chief involved, and the chief did get a result for us. Perfect. Okay. Brian. I realize that, that Brian, the other Brian, is not an attorney. But I think, this is a question, is the court case that decreed that Sunderland Avenue is going to be put in, is Toll Brothers named in that court case as a party or involved somehow, or does it just declare that the townships are supposed to get it done somehow? My understanding is Toll was sued and lost. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Okay. The township wasn't involved in it at all. And, but if, if, if Toll was sued and lost, then Toll by the court has to. To go and Thank you. Which I read here. the court's document. Yeah, okay. So. And it's all speculation and, and out of our purview. So I understand. It doesn't matter. Jim. So uh, I have a question for uh, um, about the Jim. number of days of delay. We went all the way to December, yet you said that within two weeks you'll have your comments the, ready. The so December 11th, they just requested an additional 90 days. That is my sur surmise. I'm surmising that from the date. They've asked for 90 more days of the extension. The plan has to be approved by the township. The plan has not been approved yet. The planning commission has recommended to the board some conditions. Right. right. There's been no action taken by the board to recommend approval. But in your in your opinion, could this be done in 30 days? And therefore, let's only grant 30 days in order to move Jim, this along. Jim, they can do it in any time. We don't. If they get done early, there's no penalty on us for having given them longer. But we didn't have that on earlier. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Sarah, but uh, they may not be moving quickly. I'm trying to figure out why give them 90 days. That, that was kind of my original question. I didn't quite understand why we would add 90 days to this project. So not, we don't 90 have days is typically standard. Typically, they do it 90 day chunks because it matches the 90 days initially in the NPC. I have other applicants that request a year extension because they're trying to deal with issues that could take them a year. Could it be even simpler than you told us earlier that we have to either approve their request or deny it? 
and they asked for a 90 day, there's no negotiation. So either we approve a 90 day or we deny it. And you deny the whole project for that. Right. And then we can sue too. Right. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, any other comments? Okay, did we get a motion on this? Sorry, mm -hmm. I had it. I had one oh, question. Want question. Well. I apologize for ignoring you earlier. That's fine. Um, my question was basically what that means is, unless the new road is going to come in, right? The road that goes down towards the Rainer and uh, Butternut, that's not going to get dedicated unless the new road is finished. No. My understanding is the piece that the, the court and everything else can be dedicated prior to this road being constructed. This is a set, this is an additional phase. So this road which goes down, right? I mean, if you're familiar with Sunderland. that, it's a it's downhill, Sunderland. Yes. Sunderland, it's downhill. going to drop down and then come right. back up to Hill to Eagle Farms. Right. Yes. Um, not really. I'm, I'm, that's a new road that you're talking about, yes. right? I'm talking about the existing one from the Sunderland line. It goes down to Rainer and Butternut and goes back to the Sunderland. line. And there's a connection that you're going to build like this. So the one that is going down, is there a plan for dedicating that? I have not. There has not been a request for dedication submitted to this township yet for that area. Okay. And depending where it is, it could not be in this township. It could be an Upper Euclid dedication. Uh, no, it's it's, 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 it's Well, I, I understand all that, but there is the township line is right behind the house. It's right. At the top. But nothing has been submitted to Westlake's township as a request. I did confirm with told today they will be requesting that. They don't have a timeline yet because they need to get finished. They call it the, they have two separate divisions. They have a vertical and a horizontal. Vertical is the house that's horizontal with the other guys. I deal with the horizontal. I don't deal with the vertical. That's the building department. Until they're fully built out and closed and sold, they will right. not be requesting dedication. I, can, I know that. But what is the timeline? Let's say they are going to get everything done by September or, or December. What's the timeline for getting those dedicated? They just they, need, they request. Right. The dedication process is they submit a written request to the township. I then have 30 days from the township to go out and inspect it and list anything that is not built per plan and not built to stand, okay. correct standards. Then they have to correct those. And they're corrected, then I say, yeah, okay, you're ready. Then we do come up with a list of what the dedication. But until everything is corrected, that's we want we want to make sure everything is built properly before we accept it. Brian, just to clarify, then, when you were speaking earlier about um, Toll not being able to get their exit permit from the township, there's no exit permit from the township. It's the exit permit. It's the release from the permit from the from, from the, the state. The state. It's the MPDS permit is still right. open and valid for buyer station. Correct. For the whole site. And you had said that they would not be able to get that permit until they have to they have to close out their earth moving activities, okay. and they're not done yet. For example, three of your four basins have been converted; one has not been. Right. So that has to be done and approved by the conservation district before I can even say it's approved. How can we know as the residents what the um, part of the earth moving is still outstanding besides what you've just said to us here? Do, is that information available? The only information I can tell you is based on what's in the plans. I have not, we have not been involved since the start, so we only we respond to requests for inspection. And we have not been requested to inspect it. So okay. we've been out to inspect the two basins in the center and the basin right. next to the center on the other side there. Right. We've inspected those. We're currently monitoring them to make sure they've Sure, right, right, right. But we have not been asked, and I did confirm today that that basin is still it's in its temporary configuration for it. Correct. So it has not so been stabilized. It's not in order to dedicate the loop, forget the new road extension, but just our loop, just all of the earth moving and have to be completed. What needs to be completed is what is considered part of the phase on the plan, but I do not have that knowledge memorized. Okay, so so, so when we so so I'm trying to connect for these guys and, and for myself when we say that Toll has not submitted to have the road dedicated yes. yet. Okay. What items should they be finishing before they can submit for that dedication? I can't give you a list on the top of my head because I don't know what their plan says. But, okay. but there's one thing you should be aware of. Brian, correct me if I'm wrong. If they completed everything to say they mm -hmm. had, we cannot force them to apply for the dedication. Is no. that correct? They, they, we can't. Strictly in their hands. It's up to, it's up, in my understanding, it's up to toll voters when they want to apply for dedication. And that depends on what the list of things is. But if, if it was all completed, 
Right. We still could not. Oh, say I get that part. I understand that. What we're what we're sort of in the sort of in the dark about is what is the distance between what they have done now, what they still need to do before they can get the road dedicated. Because we will get from Toll one story after the next about when this road will get dedicated. And then we find out, oh, well, they can't possibly dedicate because the retention basins aren't correct. Or they can't possibly dedicate because this dirt isn't moved. We need to know as the residents what is the timeline that is realistic so that we can plan for what's going to happen. And I, unfortunately, I can't give you a timeline top because I don't know what, what is on their plan that they have to complete in order to be ready for dedication. So is that something as residents we should be able to get from them? Not necessarily. They've got to request something from Brian to go down and do an inspection, and I'm assuming you haven't been... Well, other than monitoring the basins, we've not been out there to inspect the bridge or anything else. That was okay. Is there anything stopping us from giving her the list of everything that has to be done that you would be required to inspect before it could be dedicated? It's the plans, right? I typically don't do that list until it's requested by the developer, but if you want me to do that list, I can. That'd be great because as we don't, as we we don't have it. Okay. No, the list is done. The list is done individually per oh, okay. per property. It's not a master yeah. list of things. Okay. No, there's, there's a generic list, but it's it's the list is done specifically. Like it's like one of my generic items is storm sewer. Is all their storm sewer installed? And is installed per plan. They have to give me asphalt to prove it. I've gotten asphalt for the basins, but not for the rest of the system. So, so I don't think I, I understand your question. You know, yeah, yes. I'm probably I'm oversimplifying it because yeah. this is not my, yes. you know, area of knowledge. Chris was next. I'll get to you in a moment. Okay. Uh, how much money is going to be in escrow after they're done everything but the dedication? I have no idea with that. In front of me. They're going to want. To, I mean, in my experience as a real estate broker, they're going to want to get in and out as fast as they can. They got money up. You know, so you would think. You know, but, they don't, so, but you know, they don't seem to be in a hurry. I don't know. Yeah, they do like their bonds Yes. What is the average time when you do ask for dedication? I mean, I've heard some people say it could be six months. A lot of people say it could be up to a year. I mean, is that Sorry. what do you normally see when you're dedicating? I mean, it's dedicated. What do you mean by timeline for dedication? Like right? when someone says, "Okay, we want to clear out. We want to go. We want." You know, the township is really want these to be dedicated roads. You normally see like six months to a year. We're just trying to figure out how to go to ONJ Roberts with our hands out and say, can you help us with these 18 kids with the school buses? If we're looking at a year from now to fall of next year, that's a big story to bring to them. I can't give you a timeline. All I can tell you is that when they submit the request, I have 30 days to respond to okay. total. It's up to them. If I give them a request and it takes them six months to address it, I can't control their timeline to okay. address it. I just wonder yes. what the average is with builders. Yes. Do we have any leverage at all with Toll Brothers to be able to force them to uh, tell us what's going on? Do we at all? I don't think so, but Brian. I, I did talk with Toll Brothers today. Right. And I said the horizontal is being held hostage right now by the vertical. It's the simplest way I can put it. What's the, explain that again, the horizontal? The, the, the horizontal was all the stuff from the streets and everything right. from the street down. Right. And the vertical is the houses. Until the houses are all sold and occupied and they're done with the houses, the horizontal can't come in and finish everything and go to dedication. So the houses are all sold, okay, but the occupation will be done by the end of October. Okay. Okay, which is the end of their school of their, their fiscal year. So they have an incentive to make sure all the people are in. So basically from their end of it, then it's up to the horizontal side to step in. So what leverage do we have with the horizontal to make sure that they get the rest of it and can get the roads up? They're, they, they've posted money and signed an agreement with the township saying they're going to do that. Back to Chris's point, how much money do we have in escrow? If it's $300,000, that's going to get lost in the rounding, the Toll right. Brothers finances. It's never going to make a difference. Toll has posted performance bonds that they are legally required to and, and sign legal agreements. How much? I don't. The first bond, I mean, I don't know what's left in the box. I can, we find, can we find out what that is? Because that gives us at least an idea of where we're at. It gives you part of the list, but it, it still gives you no hammer because toll is in the driver's seat. They're going to do in their self-interest what, what, they, what they want. They're going to pave a road when they think it's, it's you know, germane to them. They're going to finish their, their punch list 
They're going to come to Brian, and he's going to then go down and say, I agree with that one, I agree with that one, nope, you've got to redo that, and so on. And, and so the money is there, and it's usually in the several hundred, bonds are several hundred thousand dollars. We in this case, the, bond, the bonds for other, for um, Ewing Track started at several million. There's still several million out there in different bonds. I just don't know if it's, your bond is part. I don't know all the bonds. There's, there's, they have millions of dollars in bonds posted in the township, I can tell you that. So, Sarah. Would it be worth asking Alice Signaro to come to answer some of those questions? She's represented Toll at the meeting about the Sunderland extension. If you can't the residents just call her? They could. Who was that? Who was that? Alice Zaro is there Sorry. Toll's attorney for this area. Yeah, Alice Zaro, Z A R O. Chris. I think two you hours. Know, the thing to do is have a plan. Two hours. Mike Swinger, Chief of Police, number one ally in the fight for getting the buses down there. I would absolutely recommend calling him. No, we're going to. Yeah, yeah. Suggested. Got that. And then, listen, the township's hands are tied. You know, they can't, Toll's got to ask for dedication. So I think everybody here seems to be on your side. The next step is to try to make it happen with Toll. If that doesn't work, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with starting to contact the media. That'll put pressure on them right there. Mm -hmm. The township could ever do that's my suggestion. Any other comments on this issue? Thank you. Can you do the vote? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Vote on the extension. Mm -hmm. so long we have a uh, motion by David. Well, Mike, Mike seconded by David. Mike. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number five. Next is the subdivision land development plan uh, submitted by Weatherstone Daycare. Tammy, this is just an application? Yes, this is to forward to the planning commission. Okay, is the planning commission prepared to deal with this? Yep, okay. we've already seen it. So we don't have to do anything except yep. to say that we're going to forward it to the planning commission. Thank you. The next item is in support of an amendment of the PA Human Relations Act. Chris, have you had a chance to see what I believe is a posted? No, we haven't posted it yet. Oh, we can post it, right? We can post it on the internet. Yeah, okay. we'll post it on the website. Yeah. So, can you, can you fill me in? Um, it's just a letter of going to Becky and John Rafferty. And that, is that based upon the statement I made at the last meeting? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. that, I, I don't know if everybody was here at the last meeting. Can I, can I fill the crowd um, I was here at the last meeting because uh, Phoenixville Borough and some other local municipalities, I think it's about 63 or 73 municipalities in Pennsylvania, have taken it upon themselves to expand uh, protected classes under the law. Uh, for example, Philadelphia, Kent Square, Westchester, and Phoenixville all have extended protected classes to include marital status, gender identity, and sexual orientation. So um, in addition to other protected classes like age and sex and race and religion, it would expand other protections. Uh, right now, in West Vincent Township, those three additional classes aren't protected. So I, kind of came to the town and suggested that we make these adopting the ordinance, uh, or at the very least, make a statement of inclusion as a start. I know a lot of people seem to be on board. I did come to hear that there was some concern about forcing uh, property owners that are currently listed as except exceptions under the Fair Housing Act. Uh, this would not be the case. Um, the Fair Housing Act exceptions to uh, discrimination are very limited, and it's basically, uh, I don't want anybody to quote me on this, but it basically limits it to where you can be very selective if you're running with somebody in your own home, or if you have, uh, for example, maybe an accessory, one rental on your property. It does not make exceptions for people that are uh, multi-family dwellings. You cannot discriminate based on you know, any of the protected classes of multi-family dwellings, but there are exceptions to the Fair Housing Act that this would not modify. 
on a much smaller basis. So if that clarifies things for people, um, that's that's where we're at. What we do, this encapsulates, I think, mm -hmm. pretty much everything you, you were looking for. Right. It may not be the ordinance you were looking for, but this is where I think we should start, is kicking it to the state level. But, but you know, it's been at the state level, like we discussed at the last meeting, it's been at the state level for two years, and... It still belongs there, in my opinion, right? But that doesn't mean, so that, send this letter, look at it, right. okay? See if it co covers most of your concerns, or sure. anybody else's concerns that we're missing. Let me finish, and then I'll call in, sir. Um, and this is putting the carpet before the horse. The okay. ordinance that that I saw that you forwarded to us regarding um, Phoenix. from from Phoenixville. Yeah. Our letter, I think, it adopts all those things. But there's some. If you ask me if I, what I would do with that, mm -hmm. and if you want me to prove that, I'm going to scratch out entire paragraphs or single words. Well, that's. I didn't say that we had to like. I know you the gun and rush into this, guys. You know, this is a, a first step in a long process. But the, the biggest thing with that Phoenixville ordinance was it sets up a five-man commission that has hiring investigative powers and unsupervised budget at that point. Right. That, that's scary to me because I think they've got a lot more money than we do. Sure, sure. And, and, and I, I didn't propose that we adopt it for Either, you know. well, as a statement is, is, I don't want to belittle it, I'm saying, please don't take that. Statement is fine, and that's what this letter does. And we might go to the next step after you and anybody else has read this and we'll talk about it again. But now I lost my train of thought. But they, the, it has no enforcement powers. Right, I understand. And that's, that's where I have a problem as a t small township, and that's why I think it's a it's a primarily a state issue, because they have much more resources instead of doing three thousand separate invoices or you know only one, it, and and that's where it belongs. And, Is there and it's a shame that they haven't done it. I agree with you. Right. Is there any way to consider having a panel like Municipal does, but on a voluntary basis, not a paid basis? I hadn't thought of that, so I'm going to do that <coughs> because I was focused on the Phoenix Hill. Right, and you know, I'm saying, you know, there's, there's many ways to get to the goal, you know, and there are exceptions too. I mean, you talked about uh, religious exceptions to this, and Phoenix Hill handles it brilliantly. Once you start taking any federal money, there is no federal, federal you know, religious exception to this. And I'm fine with the way Phoenix Hill laid it out. If religions want to invoke an exception, that's fine, as long as they're not taking the taxpayers' dollars to do so. I you're starting to sound like him. David, right. Mike, do you want to comment on this? Yeah. Just put that up on the website? Yeah. Well, we've done the first step, which is yeah. right to the state, which is ultimately the one. And, and, and I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to keep coming to meetings. I'm going to push your buttons a little bit here and there. Good. As you said, we have a lot of votes being pushed. Yes, sir. I wasn't at the last meeting, but I thought in the minutes you've already, have you asked Joe to take a look at that, the Phoenixville ordinance or other similar things to see if it's suitable here? This letter was not drafted by anybody in this room. Okay, I got that. <laughs> um, but in terms of looking, so that's writing to the state is one issue thinking about Chris's suggestion is a separate No, so, no we're taking this. Go ahead. So I, would not, I would not uh, vote to have an ordinance. Okay, I would put it at the state and federal level. It really belongs at the state level, but that doesn't but mean we can do does something it? in right. between. Okay, thank you. Chris, what, I mean, what happens if we write this letter and, okay, we give the state the benefit of the doubt for some time? and nothing happens like it has for the past two years. Is, I mean, I understand. And the question is why? It doesn't have support? Is that the reason it hasn't happened? I don't know. Okay. No, I, I don't either. I mean, I don't. But if it had support, you would think that the state well, would do it. I mean, it, it depends. 
you know, uh, it, it might come down to the, to the point where we say, well, enough's enough. We've given them plenty of time. We we have to, you know, we have to do something. Now, I'm not saying, I understand your... Okay, now you say we have to do something, so therefore you must have a reason why something has to be done now. Do you want a problem to prop, prop up in the future? No, do you have a problem now? No. Have you had a problem in Not the last I know of. 10 years? Not that I know of. Okay, so but, but you're addressing a problem that doesn't exist. How do you know? Well, no, I just asked you. Did but you how do you, I haven't had a problem. You're asking me if Have I you ever have. heard of a problem? I've heard of plenty of problems. Okay, so then you say there is a problem. There could be. No, 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 could be. Is Here's there? Here's a question, okay. But hypothetically, let's put ourselves back and just have a hypothetical, uh, you know, uh, educational intellectual conversation. Go back before to before Virginia versus Lovett, okay? And you're a small community, and you want to protect the rights of, of interracial couples' rights to marry. Is there a problem in that community? No. Could well, there be. might have been a problem. People there were might, trying to get married, but there and might then have, that was the problem. Well, there you go. Are you going to wait for the state and the feds to step in and protect that, or you go? It, that's that's the issue. Part no. That's the There's issue. There's more than a, than that issue, but that may be one. But one of the ones that that we as supervisors have to always be cautious of is what an action leaves us open. Well, oh, sure. Okay. But you can also. You said a commission, and the reason I didn't give you an answer on that all volunteer. What liability if somebody did and somebody disagreed with the decision? Right. Would we have to spend thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to defend well, ourselves? That's a question for your counsel. You exactly. <laughs> so, so that, but that's part of what yeah. we have to yeah, actually that's, think. That's about. why we're having this discussion right now, and I appreciate the fact that we're going back and forth and actually thinking about it. Would the township, let's say, uh, absent action by the state in a reasonable amount of time? Would the township be willing to go on record with a non-binding statement of inclusivity? Depending on what it is. What the statement is. Yes. Okay. Whether well, I put that in your hands. He's not in his head, yes. <laughs> I saw that. But we're not yet. I said depends on okay. the statement. There you go. So I would read the, I would well, read I the wrote, letter first. Yeah. Okay. And if you agree with the letter, then I think we would... Uh, Maybe make a statement. I mean, I, I don't know what it mean, but I, I I have a statement here that I wrote, but I'm not going to put you guys on the spot and make you say that you're going to or. I would make, not support your letter. Well, I'm understanding. I'm telling you right now, I would never put you on the spot and ask you to make a decision right now in front of all these people either. That's not fair. Okay. Okay. I would be glad to give you a copy of what I wrote, and you guys can review it on your own after the meeting. And you can come back to me and we can give me a copy of a bit and I would love to have it. Yeah, I'd like to have a copy too. And then you'll have a copy of what we're sending to the state. Sure. Absolutely. Can, can you make copies for these guys after the meeting? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can get it. Next item is the fellowship trail bid. Tell me what are we doing here? Question. Question. John. Question. John, John. Question. You forgot. Uh, I apologize, Sharon. Oh, that's okay. And it's not about the Bud Light beer cans. Okay. <laughs> no, I just want to say I read this, this Phoenixville thing and I was totally horrified, appalled at. I, I oppose, number one, I oppose discrimination, prejudice, ri I oppose all that. I really do. But I also oppose any more federal, state, local stuff coming down, regulations on us. And. I'm just, I don't understand what this is all about, and I just say, this is very upsetting. And maybe there are some things you can, you know, oh, adjust a little bit. But that whole Phoenixville thing is like so over the top and really upsetting, I thought. That's just my comment. And again, I oppose discrimination, prejudice, and all that, but you can't, you can't uh, force people you can't legislate away prejudice and stuff like that. It's still going to be there. I oppose it, but I also oppose any more regulations on us. Thank you. Amen. And I, oppose, and I oppose things like homeowners associations who tell you what color your mailbox has to be or you can't hang flags and puppy mills. So it's not, I'm being an equal opportunity <laughs> opposer. <laughs> and beer cans. And beer cans. 
Okay, you want to read the motion for the fellowship trail? I move that the board award bid for the construction of fellowship trail phase one to James R. Kenny, X ray and, and paving Inc. in the total amount of $127,544.90. Second. Any comments on this? Seeing none? Yes, sir. So is there <coughs> consideration for the placement of the bricks? If you waited just another second, you would have a vote to spend $127,000 to do go, this. Trip. Go for it. Okay. I think George right there. George. <coughs> when would it be done? Um, I believe, do you have any inkling? If, I believe it's we the have, idea is to get it done this year. The 90-day contract from those to proceed. It's a 90-day contract. So that's the this time. But we could screw it up easily. Brian. <laughs> Brian. Okay. Brian. John, this takes us from Weatherstone down to the sidewalk at the end of the community church, correct? Yes. Okay. Steve Meyer is going to be happy something's getting He's done. He's not the only one. It only took 10 years. <coughs> okay. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Tammy, could you put that notice up on them? Because there's several residents that have been working for this for years. Um, yes. Notice mm -hmm. that, that at least we approved the money. So, the, John. Next. John. Yes. I didn't want to interrupt your bid, but the Parks and Rec had had this concept for a while about selling bricks and having people sponsor part of the trail. So I was asking if this had a consideration of placing those bricks, but maybe I'll bring it up tomorrow night. We've yeah. never heard anything like that from the Parks and Rec, so until we do. Well, first. you just missed the really good Parks and Rec when we did that. Okay. Uh, next is the approval of replacement file cabinets for the township walls. Make more motion that the board approve purchase of file cabinets on the Coast Guard's purchase program with a total amount of $3,745.44. Second. Tammy, are these, does this include getting rid of the existing? Or yeah, are you going to reuse those? It was to be able to pick up those that are broken. Because this contract yeah. just says delivery and installation. Right. That's okay. We'll, we'll figure out. Okay. We'll figure out. Just, just, just add a word of removal. Just of exist already. Okay. Uh, any comments from the audience? Brian. <clears throat> I, I'm just having a hard time visualizing. Filing cabinets is disintegrating. Are these things like... 25, 30 years old or something like this? Oh, we bought them. We, we got them uh, used. So okay. I have no idea how old they are. So I take it, in other words, drawers are becoming unhappy, etc. There's nothing in them. I can't open the drawers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? Call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is the renewal for the municipal insurance program. I make a motion that the board renew the municipal insurance program for the 2017-18 year with selective insurance in the total amount of $144,522. Second. Any comments from the audience? Brian. What firm is it with? Selective. I think that right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it shows a difference of a less than a thousand dollar increase from previous year. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, alternative plan. bidders were the next highest was 147, and they've been our current insurer for how long? Well, we switched back and forth actually between the companies depending on the year. And how good it is. You never know how good an insurance company is until you ask it. Right. <coughs> so, any other comments? Seeing that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll just let me catch up for a second. Next is a request from the Infrastructure <coughs> Review Board for a TDR calculation. David, do you want to explain this or make the motion? I make the motion that the Board authorize a TDR calculation on tax parcel 25.4-111.1 and 25-4-111. 113.1 as requested by the Open Space Review Board. Second. You're seconding? No. I'll second. Um, I've got a question. 
Uh, who pays for this? It can come out of the open space uh, tax fund. Do you know how much it costs? No. It's I personally would like to wait until after we settle with Grid Co ed before doing any open space work. This is um, the parcel that we're talking about here is at um, Beaver Hill Road and St. Matthews. Yes. And it's part of the uh, what was to be the Cutler development. Um, with the uh, 16 years buying up part of that land that Cutler needed, the Cutler development was, became unfeasible. Uh, we have been approached by uh, Cutler through his council, offering to sell PDRs to the township, which would basically protect that whole, that entire corner, uh, subject to the fact they would be building four houses. How many can they build? Uh, 17 plus four, 21, I think. Uh, uh, and that is actual build, or is that what it allows based on acreage? What do you mean by that? Well, the flood zone, uh, slow, in part that's buffer, what, all that stuff. In part, that's what, what the open space committee is asking for. Because you can't just look at the, the, the acreage. It has to be uh, the actual It's actual building. buildable actual, yeah, that's lots. What okay, is that something that Cedar Bill will do then, the TDR? I mean, TDR calculation. Do you know how much this... I can, yes. I, I couldn't even guess because we did one last, we haven't done one this year, have we? We did one last year. Mm -hmm. so. Can you give us a, can you get a price to us? I, I can get you a price, yeah. Okay. I can't get you can a price. Can we uh, right pass this on until next week? Is it critical, this one? I think you, I'd have to say it is critical, yeah. Uh, Here, here's my concern, it's similar to Mike's, but it's on the other side of the road. It's the Brink co ed track, and what we're looking to expend there. I know we think we've got it covered, but until we actually do the demolition, I'm going to be sitting on pins and needles. And also, once it's, once, if, if we do go through with the purchase of that, and, and it's vacant ground, what do we do with it? Do we put in a restroom? Do we, until we have all those expenses, I'm just literally spending any of the space money because that's such a big. I think, Brian, if you can just, just help us here. I mean, what was the last, the last? Uh, no, you know, okay. Right. But why is there such a rush? I don't understand why there would be a rush. Well, the rush is that uh, presumably uh, Cutler could, could run up to the 17 additional houses here. Uh, well, they've come to you asking to sell their TDR, so I'm guessing that they're really not in a rush to build, otherwise they'd come to the township with a plan. No, he's looking to get out of that property, I believe. So well, okay. okay. Sarah. Several points related to this. Cutler had previously talked to Toll Brothers about that track. So if we don't act, maybe they turn around and call up their developer friend. Previously, we had our township manager do the TDR calculations and we did not contract them out, but it was a matter of a few hours of work, especially because this project, this these two parcels that are under consideration here had been extensively documented in Cutler's plan. So all of the meets and bounds and um, what do you call those elevations and sensitive wetlands and stuff, all of those are already delineated on documents that the township has. So it shouldn't be a huge project to do it. This should be a couple of thousand dollars or less. It's too and the third point that I'll come back to it which I'll come to your two, is that um, we used it, when I was on the Open Space Advisory Board, we were able to go directly as a board and not have to come to the supervisors to get that done. But if you're reluctant to pay for it, I suspect you could ask Westminster Land Trust if they would help you out there. Well, we want it done by an engineering firm. Oh, but they would need that money. They, we don't well, I know, but they're going, to, they're going to show us exactly what can be built. Right. And what they'd have to do for sewage and everything that's else. That's what I was suggesting the land trust could pay for it instead. That's all. It's the same quality if you insist on an engineer instead right. of somebody who knows the ordinance. I suspect this is this number is going to be around the 2,000, 2,500 number yeah. would be my guess. But I, I, again, I have a problem with anything being rushed through. 
there's no reason why somebody can't wait another two weeks, another month. This is in, this is high pressure again, just no. like 16 years. Yes, it is. We're, so I'm, you know, I'm totally. All right. So that committee or, met. Or, or, I'm sorry, John. Yeah. You know, I voiced an opinion uh, about this. That I think your decision is whether or not you want to mobilize to, to act, because it's not the two thousand dollars. You have to figure out whether or not this is an initiative you want to get into right now with the uncertainty. Uh, with everything else going on. So I, I think that if you are, then move. $2,000, don't let that get in your way. If you really can't work on this this fall, then I don't see the rush. See, and, and that, different than Mike, I'm worried about the bring co ed number. It's going to be a big number and it could explode in our faces. You never know with the project outside. And that's what my concern is. It's not just the 2,500. It's why we spent that in that. Say it comes back at 17 houses, and everybody's fun. And then they're, they're, that committee is going to make a recommendation to us that we expend that money, which is going to be thousands of dollars. And we don't have to or they could make a recommendation but, but that then, you that this would be a good thing to do in the future with future revenue, which is what you've already they've already talked about some other properties. It yeah. also is a way to say, well, you've already got twenty five hundred in. What's another fifty thousand oh, dollars? Most of us don't have budgets yeah. like that, John. Where does it get us though? Is that my point? Yeah. It's it gets us. Here's where it gets us. I think. It gets us to a point where we have a, a, an increased inventory of where we can go and in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm in agreement with you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think it's worth it. Spend a couple thousand dollars, whatever. Get the TDR so we know. I think it's worth it, whatever it takes, to preserve the land and keep our township from building up even more than it is. And that's the beautiful center of the township with the Brinko Inn and everything else. So I'm all in favor of it. Do you want to write the check? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> do, I can donate to it. Wrap this up, then it's getting late. Seeing that all those in favor of the 2500 or no. Um, in favor of the two year calculation. Yes. Um, let's put a cap on it though, just for a $3,000 cap. Is that reasonable, Brian? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That's two ayes and one no. Request from the Ridge Fire Company to assist with traffic outside Westminster Township. I make a motion that the board authorize the Ridge Fire Police to attend the East Coventry Community Day to assist with parking and traffic control. Second. Any comments from the audience? Brian. These seem to come up with some regularity and it, are they, do they become basically pro forma that we're, we're going to approve them? Is there some way we could put a policy in place, say that the township manager would get these approved them and just keep you guys aware of them? Or is there some legislative regulatory reason that you guys personally, the Board of Supervisors, have to approve them? We'll wait for our solicitor to be next to us to Can you ask Joe that, Tammy? Well, let's wait until he's here and next to me. Well, are you going to remember? Tammy, right there. <laughs> <laughs> but not a separate phone call. We will get another invoice. What about this one? Yes. For September 9th. We have a uh, oh, second. Yes. 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 Any other comments from the audience? The closed discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, <laughs> did you hear that, Brian? We're going to check with our solicitor. Sounds good. There's a change order uh, next for the Horseshoe Trail Tip. I make the motion that the board approve change order number one from Marino Corporation for the Horseshoe Trail and Nantonville Road project in the total amount of $72,835. Second. Um, any discussion on this from the audience? Brian. Thank you. What are we changing that it's, we're now up to, we're at, uh, you said we're Storm adding water up. management of over 450 feet, or close to 450 feet of pipe. We're adding some, some this is to be paid? No, no we're, we're adding stormwater piping along the side of it. And there is some additional paving because of that, because we're going to rip up a little bit of across that fellowship road. Is there some reason why this wasn't in the original spec? I can't answer that one. I know the answer to that, but I, I forget the answer to that. Brian, yeah. what's the answer to that? <laughs> It was in. It was originally planned that the road crew was going to be doing the work, and they they did not have the capacity to get it done with the season we had prior to the pavement being made the project coming through. So they asked for clarification with another or with an an engineer other than yourself, and that engineer decided, you know, this is a bigger project, and when it I, I just as just as the record, I am so getting tired of these last minute. You got to do it now, or that road's not going to be paved, or or the TDR calculation, or you know, got to be done right now. I'm going on record. I'm going to stop that, and the next time it comes up, I'm gonna. I don't care. We'll do it next year. But I think we learned our lesson on Black Horse Road not to just do willy nilly stormwater management, Brian. That's the answer that I'm going to be in favor of this. Hallelujah. It was also, it's a lot higher than I think anybody, any of us thought it would be, but that's because the size of the project uh, requires a, the uh, fair wage. Prevailing wage. Prevailing wage, I'm sorry. The prevailing wage act kicks in, so the rate has to be higher. All I'll say is I agree with you, John. Could you say that a little louder? Speak into the microphone. I, I agree with you, John, that... You know, you're right. This thing with stuff coming up, one at the last minute, we've got to do it. And second, you know, the change orders, you know, 
it sounds like someone didn't either didn't discuss with the road crew or the road crew said they could and now they've decided they can't and that should kind of really be sorted out in the front end because it might have affected who won the bid but at this point it's too late You're right, but I think the road crew made the right decision. I don't know how it works between them and Erica, but I think I, 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 there's no way I'm, pri I'm privileged that information either. You know, I'm saying is something went wrong somewhere. You need to look at it that way, and I, you're, you're echoing my sentiments, but it also something went right. We had a problem, and this does it professionally. Anyway, George. What was the latest start for the project? No. I think a lot of people. When's, it, when's it scheduled there. to start? Great. I talked to Marino Corporation today, and the recycling train is currently in New Jersey, and you were the first project when it comes back to Pennsylvania. The plan, the, the schedule right now from the recycler is September 22nd. It's supposed to be transported back here. Just to drag this meeting in longer, explain this train that you're talking about coming down. <laughs> nice Outside <job>. microphone. <laughs> I'll just make it easier. The project on Horseshoe Trail is to uh, recycle the pavement in place, which is a process as a machine. I have not seen one, but the pictures look at it. It appears to be about 60 to 80 feet long. It's multiple pieces of equipment in a, in a train configuration. The first one basically grinds up the road to a certain depth. It's then passed through the train, pulverized, mixed with further with asphalt emulsion, placed back down and compacted to become a new road. That saved, doing that process saved us approximately $70,000 in the initial bid. So that is the, and that process will take, is this would take two days on the road instead of spending weeks digging it up and rebuilding it. So it's a much, much quicker and much less intrusive way to recycle and repave the road. You using all that stuff right and up there. Using it right there. Perfect. Yes, yes Suzanne. Can we do this on schoolhouse lane and put speed bumps into it? <laughs> <laughs> we will, but we're gonna have to knock the houses on the east side completely down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. The original bid was I think you said four hundred seventy five thousand, this is another seventy two thousand, so it takes it up to its approximate about somewhere around 550k. The original contract is 367,000. Oh, okay. So that takes us to about 420. I have those figures earlier today. I'm sorry. I have it right here. I don't know what the heck I did with them. I think it's 429 to be honest with you. Yeah, I have a okay, copy, the, I have a copy the contract is $367,905. Close enough. And how, what distance are we paving or doing the process in or over? Davis Lane all the way up to St. Matthews. And how many, is that miles, two miles, one mile? Any other questions? Brian's are, looking. Are, are, aren't you? Does that mean the piping is going to be done first? Yes. Yes. Okay, so the September 22nd is going to be pushed back maybe a week or something until they get the pipes in. I talked to Marita today and they feel they can get the pipe in prior to that end of that, end of the, to the 22nd, and the recycling will start the following Monday, the 25th. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Brian? Distance. Distance for what? The length of the road? Yes, if they're paving. You were looking it up by the day. I don't have distances. I have square yardage and tonnage in my, oh, well, okay. in my bit. I was looking to see if the distances were written down. And we go by your by. Uh, you didn't bring that file, Brian. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a line. About a mile. Any other questions? A call for a vote on the approval of the 72,000 and change. Aye. 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 Brings us to my favorite part of the meeting, the public comment on non-agenda items. Francis, well, you had your hand up awful quick. Yeah, could, <laughs> could you uh, raise to get the cones in on the Broad Springs and Janey Lane in the, the big ditch where the pipe is? Yes, what about 
Um, the last meeting I asked, could you could someone get codes? Well, could the road crew put codes That's in right. that ditch? Because it's really a deep ditch. He said no. So far, there, there's no cones in there. He said what? He didn't think it was the appropriate place for cones. He, the road crew said, the foreman said he didn't think it was appropriate. Bob Good, Paul. let him drive over the side of the road. I didn't say that was our answer. <laughs> I will call Mark tomorrow. <laughs> Any other items? Suzanne. I have two. Uh, one, someone picked up two very large cones from my house when they were putting up the sign for 50 miles an hour on uh, the, uh, after the bridge was open. So, and they're quite large cones, Francis, so maybe the township, which I'm sure has them now, could put them in that ditch for you. So that's one thing. And they were quite sizable. They took them off my wall, and it's, I don't really care. But if they would serve the ditch, that would be a wonderful thing. The second thing is that you'd ask me about our, our road. And um, in thinking about our road, yes, it does need to be repaved. And I really would love it if you could either, two things, make it one way or make it one way with low speed bumps. Not the big kind that you go airborne, but the kind that you can plow over so if, now that the road is open again, no, I'm sorry, now that the bridge is open again, we're having speeding again. Let me and, bring you up to speed. Huh? Let me bring you up to speed what's been done. I believe the chief and Erica met with the uh, traffic engineer out there before she left. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten a report from the traffic engineer. We're looking for solutions from him before we just give it any thought. Well, before somebody dies, because I'm telling you, people come flying down that road from... St. Matthews and cross Columbia Springs, and then they have to floor it to 55 <clears throat> miles an hour before they hit the bend. And one of these days, I mean, I've lost enough animals, that's bad enough. But one of these days, it's going to be a fatality. So that's my comment. Thank you. Noted. Any other comments? Sarah? Yeah, you, you raised a question back when we were talking about the um, TDR calculations, and you said if Bryn Co ed goes through, what kind of doubts do you have? Until you see a signed contract in real estate, it didn't happen. I understand. Any other comments? No, that, that was part of a conversation, John. You can't get away that way. No, you were, you were trying to make a point. I don't know what that point no, is, sir. But, but. But. All right, so here you're talking about you couldn't even spend a couple of thousand dollars because you don't know what you're going to have to do with Green co -ed. I previously asked you if um, you were still entertaining an offer from someone who wanted to buy 10 acres of the heart of the 72 acres. Are you, is that offer still under discussion? I don't believe so. It's the only way I can put that. David? It's a fair statement. Mike? The fair, true statement as you know too. So, so you're, you're still expecting the township <coughs> would purchase the whole 72 acres for potential open space recreation for township use? That would be my game plan. Okay. That's that's one good thing. So then, are you thinking you're going to have to pay for it all at once, whether it's the original asking price or the asking price plus the demolition? Still, can't you pay for it over time so you don't hamstring other opportunities to do things with your open space money? Well, first, I have to pay for it all at once. Actually, I don't think we can pay for it over time. That's my why would, why would that be? It? Most mortgages can be paid. No, we're not taking a mortgage. I understand, but I mean, I mean if we took a mortgage, you're right. We could Everything's I mean, negotiable. Let, let me ask, ask you this. And I'm really, I really am, I'm not going to go into lots of detail because it's just very, very inappropriate at this point. We are probably not going to do the demolition. It'll be added to the purchase price. So you're, we're paying for it anyway. Yes. Yeah, I, I've understood well, that. So the asking price is in, in a way. We're, we're yeah, we're paying pay for it. clear land. Yes, open space. Open space. With the two retained buildings that that lands was suggesting we, no we maintain. I don't know if we've made the Again, decision. now you're asking your let's move on. So. I, I walked it with the open space and Brian, and he that's what he said. Okay, mm -hmm. so. 
Okay, that was one of five. Anybody else? Hmm? That was one of five notes I made during that. But I don't want to take Harriet's place. Um, have, do we have, have, did you bring in any temp help for the front office while Eric is out? Could did, we? Did you or no, could you? We have not. I just thought it was kind of putting a lot of extra work on Tammy and Jason and Danielle. Duly and noted. Next question. Okay. How about um, the opening on the Parks and Rec Committee? Have, are you going to announce that too? Um, what what open space filled. committee? Parks park and Rec. Rec. Or park and, uh, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Vacancy. Yeah, Park and Rec was going to acknowledge it except it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the one they're going to do tomorrow? Mm -hmm. the, they, haven't, they haven't had a meeting since they got break. Yeah. The, they the have person, not announced that there's an opening yet at this point. No. The person who resigned told me about it. Well, told you, but I mean, I think Parks and the, Rec has the, the yeah, So it's not untrue. It's just, I mean, this is, all right, so this and, person. Until, who, it, let me answer your question. Until the Parks and Recs tell us there's a vacancy, we're going to take no action. Because we don't know of anything. Okay? I understood this person wrote an email to me. some well, my, people in my July. My been out of service for the last four or five days because I dropped it and it didn't like it. Yeah, but this was, this was, she this said was after, after the July meeting we've had so August, here we are, September. The, rec, the Parks and Rec Committee has not done anything, so your beef is with them. It's not a beef. It's a, Apparently it is. No, it's What do you want us to do? It's a question. You're aware of it, so. No, I so just became aware of it today. Getting bogged down in process is just plain silly. What are you asking us to do? It just became aware to me today. Just because I said it? No, somebody oh. mentioned it earlier today to me. Oh, okay, good. So, but it, it still doesn't matter. It, there's no official action that we can take until we hear what the recommendation is from the Parks and Recs Committee. You mean they might recommend? I have no idea it. what they might do. That's up to them. And then we have to put it on the website for people to take the place if there's an opening. Next right? question. Yeah, it's going to be some time before us. What's your question? Next question. Did you have one? She gave up. Okay. I'll, I'll save this for the next time. Hmm? I have two I'll save them for next time. Okay. Harry, did you have one? I was just going to say, I had a feeling you could negotiate with natural lands about a payment in a couple, over a couple of years. They have to come up with a lot of money. Well, I, I understand, you, but... Now you're trying to get us to tell you our... No. Us to tell you our negotiating strategy, no, which I'm, we aren't prepared to do. Yes, yeah, that's fine. I'm just saying I think that might be something useful. That's, you, you. you guys have done more of that kind of stuff than I have. Yes, Suzanne. Oh, I'm, Suzanne, then come over to the site. I just wanted to say that National Lands has not raised the total amount of money yet, so they're still looking for another, I think, $500,000 or something like that. So our negotiation position, Harriet, might not be the goal terrific, that, and they really they need the money so that we sure. can have the The goal that. was they got us to commit to a million two. That enabled them to go after the whole pile. Right. So <clears throat> it really worked out to their benefit. Anyway, there was a question over here. Yes. I was asked to bring this up by a concerned citizen. Um, the bridge on Davis Lane, right by Bertrand, it consists of, on the surface, two metal slabs, plates, plates, plates with about this much gravel in the center and a little bit on each side. It is very dangerous for horses. There are no drill techs, no warium, nothing that's put on the shoes will grip on that. One of the horses, one of the foreign hands that went um, from the horse show grounds Sunday, went down when yeah. they hit that. Um, it's worth your life to try to get across that safely with a horse. Is there anything the road I don't know, but I'll do? call Mark Hughes tomorrow on another issue. I'll ask him that. Please. It's a good question. Thank you. Um, Brian, could I speak to you on that issue before you leave tonight? Yes, thank you. 
Any other questions? Yes, Jim. Status of the Fox Hollow Trail? Which is that? Status, status of the Fox, Fox Hollow Trail. Um, what is the... Yeah, I don't know. We're... It's not supposed to be worked on this month. I saw, actually, I thought it was last month. But I was told this month. So maybe when you're talking to Mark... We flagged it. When you Bill and I list, flagged it. When you're on your list of talking to Mark and the road crew, maybe you can ask. Who, who is monitoring that with Erica out? I actually have some information to put this year. I am? <laughs> I, I, I have some information. I did. Yes. Um, okay. Bill Holderness is trying to set up time. He has to pick the time to work with the department with the road department. Into the microphone. Bill Holderness has to pick time that he's available to work with the road department. So that's what we're working on to pick time. That's that's Bill had this week, but our road guys did not. So now Bill's we're going to do another trial. We open by the end of the year? So we'll do it's Bill Holderness. I don't know what his schedule is. I'll add him to my list to call tomorrow. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Do I have a motion to end the meeting? Sure do. Second? Aye.